Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a playthrough of Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds. This is the latest uh, standalone set. And disclosure, I was sent a review copy of this one. I had somewhat mixed feelings on the original Maximum Apocalypse, loved some things, didn't like others, but they've made a ton of rule updates and improvements since then, so let's see how this new version plays. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So if you haven't seen any of our previous Maximum Apocalypse coverage, uh, this is a post-apocalyptic game, and you're trying to complete some sort of scenario objective and survive. Wasted Wilds has two new campaigns, but they also have a booklet that takes you back through the old campaigns and kind of like updates them to the new rule set. I'm playing the second mission in the uh, basic campaign, Smoke Signals, because the second mission is where they introduce the idea of tribes, which are these groups that you're like kind of uh, fighting or becoming friends with in the post-apocalyptic world. It also includes the exposure cards, which were from the uh, first scenario, and the day-night cards that I'm going to be using are technically not introduced until the third scenario, but I kind of liked uh, the second mission a little bit better for doing a video, so I'm just kind of pointing them in. So technically, these are not part of this mission, but I'm going to use them anyway. And the goals of Mission 2 are pretty straightforward. I need to uh, get to the space with the A-star. By the way, you can set up the map however you like. I just said kind of a basic one to make it easier to film. And then they have like rules like the A-star has to be at least like three or four spots away. I put it a little bit farther just to make it more exciting. And then we also need to find the Norse tribes like base, which is going to be the first uh, cavern location that we find. So that's going to be random wherever it might be in the uh, face down tiles. And finally, we need to get uh, one fuel per player. I'm playing two-handed back to the van. Then we can uh, drive and win. And yeah, I mentioned the tiles. You'll be moving through these and flipping them up. You'll also be spawning these little monster tokens onto them. And then if you like move into places with tokens, those could become actual monster cards fighting you. But the action of the game is primarily card-based. Each player controls a character. Again, I have two. They do have like an official solo mode where you combine the hands and like decks of characters. I've not had much luck with those in other games, so I'm not even trying it here. I'm just doing basic two-handing, which works pretty well. But each character's got a unique deck. I've got uh, the chef here. My other character is a thief. They've got their life total. You don't want that to run out. They've got their hunger, which is going to build up every round and eventually start dealing damage to them if they don't eat. And they've got cards, including gear, like uh, the chef's knives and frying pans they can equip and like a kind of instant event cards they can play. And we're going to face down monsters. We each start with one. So the chef's got a wolf on him. It uh, goes into his area. This is a little bit like uh, something like Arkham Horror, the card game, where they move with you and you can like fight them and stuff. And then my thief uh, is fighting a bear. Yay. Okay. So we didn't get any uh, Norse uh, tribesmen yet, which is kind of good because they're not happy with us yet. And we, if we want to be friends with them, we probably don't want to fight them too much. But we definitely got some wildlife friends to contend with. So I'll explain the rest of the rules as I go, but let's jump into the solo playthrough. So I'm going to start with the thief's turn. And the first thing you do is spawn monsters. And you can either do that with spawn dice or this optional spawn deck, which gives you a little bit more control over like difficulty and surprises and also makes the uh, distribution of the 2d6 more equivalent. I'm going to use the deck for this one. And uh, all I'm really looking for this time is potentially an eight. These values in the top right of the tile shows what their spawn value is. And if that's rolled or drawn, then you put a monster token there. Or in the case of your characters already being there, you just straight up draw monster cards. But we got a four, which in this case does absolutely nothing. <laughs> but as the uh, board gets more revealed, of course, you'll add more monsters as you go. The next step is advancing time. So you've got this little uh, time spinner here. In this uh, mission, it's starting on this little tribe one. And it ticks along one, two, three. Every three ticks brings you to another big icon. When you get to this one, you look at the topmost card on this day-night stack, and the direction the red arrow is pointing, if any, is going to move all monster tokens in that direction, which could cause them to move into you and immediately attack you. When you get to this one, the exposure one, every character that's not in a location that has a little like house icon, which shows it as like an indoor section, you can see that with the van right here next to the name. Every character that's not in a location like that is going to get an exposure card. At first, it's just the basic effect, Frost Nip here, which is going to cause them to take two damage every turn. But if you already have one of those, then you flip a card over and get some even nastier abilities as you suffer more and more from the cold. But these are what are called status cards. A lot of uh, character abilities and cards you can scavenge for will heal them. So uh, you have a way to get rid of them if you get exposed. Then whenever it comes over to the night spot, we're going to flip over the top day card. And it's going to have some kind of immediate or ongoing effect. I didn't see what that was, but I guess I should uh, <laughs> shuffle it up. 
And finally, when it comes back around of a tribe symbol, every tribe in play, because there can be more than one in some missions, is going to move one step. Uh, they have like this little step tracker for their attitude toward you, and they'll move one step toward their like basic one. So the Norse tribe tends to be kind of wary of us, but in this scenario, they start out angry. Uh, if you like do stuff like attack them, it's going to go further over toward enrage. Once they're enraged, you can't really do anything. If you give them uh, cards like your own gear cards or give them uh, things that you've scavenged, you can make them become nicer uh, until they'll trade with you or even like help you fight the monsters at that allied step. Now, the map moves based on the spawn. If you get anything except a seven, it moves a single spot. But if you get a seven, it moves four spots, which can cause you to get like exposure or something before you really expected it. Okay, the next step of a player's turn is to draw a card. I start with uh, four. And to go through, I've got Backstab. Uh, the Thief has a bunch of like these automatic damage cards that depend on what's in her discard pile. She has a way bigger deck than any of the other characters. So for Backstab, you have to discard another card, but you deal uh, two damage to a target for each Backstab in your discard pile, and you stun the targets they want to activate that turn. She can equip this uh, snub nose Revolver. It's got mid-range, which means she can shoot orthogonally adjacent tiles as well as her own. Six shots, and it deals three damage, and then she rolls a die on a one to draw a monster card for making noise. On a six, she gets three more damage. That's nice. Bait on this is a great one for later when the board starts getting filled up. She can move all monster tokens within two tiles of her. That's long range to her tile. Get rid of two of them and only get a single monster card. And tokens being on your space don't immediately attack you. It's like when you move into them or when other things happen. So this is a pretty amazing ability. That thing I need, pick a scavenge deck, draw the top five cards and choose one to keep. Shuffle the remaining cards back into the deck. Oh, then draw a monster. That's the nasty part. <laughs> but that's great to like dig for the fuel we need to win the mission. And the card she just drew, this is a uh, one space gear, by the way, uh, the snub nose was also one. Characters, until they get like backpacks or things, can hold a total of four uh, gear capacity. So she could have the grappling hook, snub nose, and two more points of something. This one's pretty amazing, especially for later. Uh, long range again is up to two. Let's her for one action, move to any revealed tile in range without triggering its effect. So like when she's backtracking and like coming back to somewhere we've already been, she is amazing with that one. She's also got her basic stats. She can take 19 damage before she dies. She's got a stealth rating of 10, which is super good. Uh, so when she moves into a tile with enemies, she'll need to roll equal to or under that number minus the number of enemies there. And then like they won't see her and she won't get attacked by them. And she has the ability, which I'm probably going to use, push, short range. Move a monster attached to you and attach to another player in range. I think I want to use that because the chef, as we'll see, is a much better fighter than the thief. And also the bear has the ability that when he attacks for five damage, he deals that damage to every target in range. So he would actually help the chef to kill their wolf, which would be uh, just lovely. See, I think for her first action, she is going to push the bear over to the chef. For a second action, let's start moving towards the A. So to move, you first flip over the spot. In this case, it is a Vault Hello Fallout uh, with a six pawn value. And the icon here shows you can scavenge there. And in this case, you scavenge from the green deck, which tends to have food to lower your hunger. Ooh, and uh, this one has a unique action. You can move to another revealed vault tile. So if we get the other vault found, we'll get some teleportation uh, abilities opened up. All right, so that was two actions after the push. Let's go ahead and have her scavenge. Uh, you can only scavenge in each tile once per player turn. So I couldn't just like scavenge, scavenge, scavenge and get a billion f uh, food in this case. But for my third action, I will go ahead. So you draw the top card. In this case, it is a backpack that I can play to give me plus one uh, carrying capacity. No need to do that yet with my last action, but it's nice to have. And then should I move her one more? Um, now, you know what? In case the chef needs help, let's go ahead and equip the... Uh, snub nose and get these six ammo tokens on it so after she's taken four actions if she had any end effects like if she was a uh, frost nipped or whatever then she would resolve them but she doesn't have any then all of her enemies will activate from left to right she doesn't have any of those either next her hunger increases by one from one to two in this case if you get food it'll let you lower that die if the die gets to six though you flip your character over and it starts moving and you take two damage then four damage then six damage then eight damage then you die so you know eventually you got to eat although as we'll see with the chef in a second he helps a lot with that but yes her hunger is up to two and finally we check if we have one which we clearly have not but yeah you have to survive until the end of a player turn before you can resolve any win effects that's a turn now we're coming over to the chef uh he's definitely got some friends to play with but first let's uh do his spawning so unfortunately we have a pretty good chance of some badness here because eight and six besides seven are the most common numbers yep there we go so the vault has a six which means if nobody was there we would put a monster token there and you'd have to be stealthy to move through it but with the thief already being there we just straight up draw a monster for her oh so this is one of the norse 
It's a barn. Maybe I'll trade with them or something. Eight life, two damage. Uh, if you destroy them because they're just a child, increase the tribe's hostility by three, then draw a monster card. So yeah, we're not going to kill her. We're going we're gonna to try to get rid of her, be nice to her. But I'll show you how that works when we get back to the thief. Let's uh, do the chef stuff. Once again, that was not a seven, so we only go a single spot. Next turn, all monster tokens will move north one space, uh, but there aren't any yet, so that doesn't matter much. Okay, and then the chef's drawing a card. Let's see what he... Oh my god. Okay, so, yeah, he's got a few knives in his deck, but I've drawn every single one. Uh, it takes up one spot. Uh, it's short range, because you can only attack in your space. Deal three damage to a target, which is not amazing, but you'll see the chef has uh, things that boost that eventually. He's also got a ration, a search for scavenge discard pile for a food card of your choice and add it to your hand. That's great once we uh, have some food and spend it. And finally, he's got a defensive item, the frying pan. Uh, every time you are dealt short range damage, your attacker suffers three damage. And he's got 26 life. But much less stealthy than the thief. And his ability cook mid-range. It affects uh, him and all characters within one orthogonal space. Discard a food card to reduce hunger of all players by the amount on that card. So he can kind of share the wealth of any uh, food he might get or that the uh, thief trades to him. All right, so what do I do want to do? First action out of four, I want to play a knife. Now I could start stabbing, but actually I think playing the frying pan will save me a lot of actions. Okay, so that's two actions. All right, so then at this point, the bear is going to do five damage to the wolf. So he'll only have two life left. So he attacks me. The frying pan will finish him off. And then the bear himself will take three damage to be down to nine. So if I stab him twice, he'll be down to three. And then I can stab him more next turn. Although, do I want to move to the vault, which is slightly less likely to be drawn again than the van? Yeah, I think I do. So third action, move here. Oh, wait, wait, no, I don't, no, I don't, because the bear attacks all targets in short range, which would mean <laughs> also the thief and the bard, so he's staying right on that van, and instead he'll just get the bear very close to defeat. That was with uh, two stabs from the knife. Okay, now we do monster activation. The wolf deals three damage plus two for every other wolf in play to me, so I take 20, or I'm down to 23, but smack the frying pan, hits him back for three damage. Okay, now the bear does five damage to me, ouch, I'm down to, uh... 18, which is not a great start, but he also does five to the wolf, which defeats it, and I frying pan him back, so he's only got three life left, should be easy to deal with next turn. Okay, and then the uh, chef's hunger goes up by one, and we're back to the thief. All right, but let's hope we don't uh, spawn a... Ah, my gosh. Okay, so now the uh, chef's getting a new friend. Oh, crud. In this case, it's a girl fur. Uh, thanks, uh, Norse or Scandinavian. Uh, so 12 life, four attack. Counter means that uh, if you attack him at short range, he'll hit you back for four. But I think we can make uh, that guy our friend if we uh, play our cards right. Okay, but now, bloop. Um, so we've got all monster tokens moving north, which does nothing. Now in three more turns, or like one turn, if we get a seven, we're going to get exposure. Right now, both characters are on uh, indoor or sheltered places. But if they move, they might not be, which does uh, have to play into my decision process here. And right, what's the thief getting? A grappling hook. Another grappling hook. Okay, so let's get to some allies. What can we do? First of all, if we have a tribe attached to us, we can parlay with them. For one action, we can either discard an equipped gear card, so I could just give the barn my gun, or one of the scavenge cards, like my backpack, which I don't really need that much. And each time you spend an action to do that, you'll move uh, their little... Uh, attitude marker, whatever it's called, one to the left. When they're wary, they'll still attack you, but after doing so, you get to discard them, so they just kind of attack you and run away. If you get a two to the left, you have the trade action open. At that point, they won't attack anymore, they just kind of hang out with you. And it also opens up the trade action, where you can discard a scavenge card in your hand to draw a card from any of the three decks, the one that has mostly uh, fuel or food or whatever. But then you discard the tribal monster, it's kind of like you trade and they ran away. If they're allied, they still won't attack. You can still trade with them. But also, when they activate, they'll attack a monster to their right and, like, help you fight instead of attacking you. So that's awesome. So yeah, for her first uh, action, every kid wants a backpack, right? Awesome post-apocalyptic backpack. So <laughs> that gets them to wary, where they would just attack me and then run away. But you know what the hey? My thief's a lover, not a fighter. She's going to go ahead and give uh, the kids. So yeah, a backpack and a gun, what every child really wants. <laughs> But that gets them to trading. So they are not going to attack us, which is excellent. But I also don't have any uh, cards to trade with them yet, so I'm not going to worry about that. Right, that was uh, two actions. I'd like to get some food. Let's have her draw from the vault for a third action. There we go. So uh, reduce a player's hunger by two for one action. Although I can also trade this with the barn. I can also discard it to make them happier with me. Or for a free action, if we're in the same space, I can give it to the chef, and then he can feed both of us, which is probably what I want to do. Okay, for my fourth action... 
If I move, I might get <laughs> I might get frost nipped because right now I'm on a place, but uh, there's no guarantee that when I move I will still be. And we're three ticks away from the frost nip happening if you're not in a sheltered place. And if either of us draw a seven for our next turns, it'll be too late for the thief. So I think I might stay in the vault and just maybe take another monster. Hopefully not. So for my fourth action, what the hey, I'll equip uh, her grappling hook. Uh, worst case, that I can just trade this to the Norse later, but I'd also let her move fast late game. She getting hungry. We're ticking up to, where is it? Three. <laughs> Just still not too bad, and I have the food to deal with it. Oh, and yeah, uh, the barn does not attack because we're in the trade status with him. So that's going to take us right to the chef. Or I should say right to the chef's uh, a nine. Nothing. Okay. One of the seven, kind of, just to like get past the exposure. Get a ticks, a single one, which means uh, next turn we will not be at exposure yet unless the thief draws a seven. But she could. That's certainly the most uh, common result, right? Speaking of the thief, uh, let's go ahead and move to the vault. They'll be together. So that's one action. Two action. We'll stab the bear so he doesn't hurt our new friend. Third action. I think he'll scavenge as well. Ammunition. Add two bullets to an equipped weapon. Well, yeah, again, even if we don't need that, we can use the trade action to swap it out, for example, for a draw from the red scavenge deck and hopefully uh, get some fuel we need. Or we can just discard it to uh, parlay with them and make them like us better. And by the way, there is a alternate uh, side for each of the tribes that has a trade affinity, in this case food. You can make the game easier by making uh, that type of item have double effects. So giving them food will move them twice to the left. Or you can make the game harder by making that the only thing they want and you can't like parlay or trade with them with other stuff. But we're not playing that way. Where were we on trade? There we go. All right, so what do you do? He moved, stabbed, uh, scavenged. Ooh, and while he's uh, with her, he's going to go and take the food, as long as she's within one of him. Uh, he doesn't want to use it yet, because it'll his little cook ability will lower it by two for everybody, but it can't go below one. So if he waits until uh, at the end of his turn, when his hunger goes up to three, he'll get full effect from it. He's got a fourth action left. Um, You know what? What the hey? Let's go ahead and give away the ammunition. I don't think either of these characters is really, like, gun super heavy. And meet our new besties. That means now any uh, wilderness creatures that happen to attack us are going to get beat up by the Norse. Awesome. Which means we can kind of speed things up because we're going to go right to the thief's spawn. There it is. Awesome. I love that that came out. That's a seven. So seven never spawns anything. There are no seven spots. But it does advance this by four, which can be a terrible, surprising thing. Two, three, four. You resolve any you pass by. But in this case, nobody suffers frost nip because we're both uh, chilling with the Norse in the vault. Yay. All right. So uh, let's start moving with the thief, right? Uh, should she try to get more food? No, I guess we're already fooded up for now. Let's... uh. Let's try to get over to that A and actually work on winning this thing or try to find a red scavenge spot, which is uh, what tends to have fuel. So she'll go to the right first. Ice cliffs. Okay, so this one has a test, which means uh, whenever you move in there, you have to resolve this. And uh, test means you roll against your stealth. Remember, hers is 10. Normally, a stealth check is modified by the number of monster tokens on your space, but tests like this are not. So if she rolls a 10 or less, she's going to reduce her hunger by one. But if she uh, rolls a 11 or a 12, she's going to draw an exposure card. She seems pretty good for this, but we probably don't want to have the chef go that way because his stealth is so much worse. There we go. She goes down one hunger. I guess she, I don't know, what, drank some ice water? <laughs> uh, so that's one action. There's nothing much there. It's not a shelter. You can't scavenge. Let's go again. Second action, a ski resort. Ah, oh, man. When you reveal, you draw an exposure card. So she's now frost nippened, fr frost nipped. Uh, <laughs> not sure what the word would be there. So she's taking two damage at the end of every turn automatically. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, we can scavenge green or red. That's pretty great. Uh, at the end of the turn, though, she has to discard a card from her hand. I guess she's uh, having so much fun skiing. She's not focused on survival anymore. Now, right, that was two actions. Let's definitely have her scavenge for the red. Try to get the fuel. We need at least, again, two fuel to win this uh, mission. Uh, ooh. You know what? This works. Uh, red, cure all status effects on a target. You know what? She'll uh, go ahead and use that right away because guess what? Then she won't be frost nipped anymore. So how many actions was that? One, two, find the antidote, use the antidote. So she's going to have to discard a card. But that's okay. She wants to uh, search red again next turn. So her frost nip is cured. Oh, by the way, I didn't show. I got a second backstab. I might actually discard one of the two because each one uh, costs a discard to play. And they are boosted. You do two damage for each backstab in your discard pile, including the one you discarded. So yeah, she'll, uh, with that little force discard from the ski lodge, discard one backstab and power up the second one. Then her hunger is back up to three, although she's too far away for the chef to help her now. But they'll meet up again before they're starving, hopefully. 
Speaking of Sheffy boy, uh, da, 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 another seven. Wow. Which means one, two, three, four. Oh, man. So first, we're going to get a day night card. Lightning Storm. Move up to three monster tokens from the map. Well, unfortunately, there aren't any <laughs> to help us out. And then, okay, the tribe, unfortunately, is only trading with us again, not allied, although we can get them back because they always move towards their uh, natural state. All right, so he's here. Um, I don't really want to go through the ice cliffs. We could always use more food. Let's go ahead and scavenge for the first action. Another vault card. Oh, wait, sorry, I should uh, show. He drew another frying pan, not that it matters much yet. All right. Oh, <laughs> so there are a few uh, non-food cards in uh, the other colored decks. We got a fuel, which means maybe... He should go back and drop it off at the van. That's a free action because fuel costs or takes up one of your inventory spots. Right now he's filled up. So he's got one, two, three, four. So yeah, so that was one. Let's go two free drop off. You take this out of the game and yeah, there's a little of tokens you can use. So there we go. That's two actions. And I mean, she seems like she'll be able to get to A. We need to find the cavern though. So what the hey, let's go down here. Three. Mountains. Whenever you enter it, you draw a card, although eight means it's pretty likely to uh, have some badness happen. We got a Rancid Onion. So this is a short range effect. It would cost one action and get discarded. You can stun a target, which means they won't do anything that turn, and poison them, which means they'll take one damage every turn. All right, but I don't really want to stay there. Uh, so let's just keep uh, kind of exploring for a shelter. Until the start of your next turn, you're immune to damage when you end your turn here and started your turn somewhere else. So that's a nice place to like run if you're getting mobbed by people. And it has a shelter icon, which is never a bad thing, so they're both in shelter currently, but no cavern yet for the second part of the mission. That's okay, so far our uh, monster count is pretty low. We are getting hungry though. That brings us back to the thief at the ski resort. Oh my gosh! What are the chances we would get an 11 right now? See, that means that uh, our friend here is getting a monster card. It's a wolf. Although, ooh, if we give the girl for uh, something, he would attack the wolf before the wolf would attack us, which means a single knife and uh, combined attack would be enough. So yeah, we're definitely going to uh, become friends with the Norse again, I think. And that starts bringing us toward monster. We still have zero monster tokens on the map. This does not usually happen. <laughs> and the thief draws. What the heck? Another backstab? I think there's only like five of those in the deck. <laughs> but means I'm ready to stun and hurt some people. All right, first of four actions. The Thief's doing fine right now. Let's try to find the second fuel we need. No, we got, ooh, a three food. That's pretty good if we can't get back to the chef quickly. By the way, we're allowed to have up to 10 cards at a time. She's currently at six. All right, so that was one. Don't want to stay on the ski resort, um, although we do need f more fuel. Let's go here. Do, do, do. Ooh, there we go, gas station. And when we reveal, we get to immediately resolve a free scavenge action. And this does not count as like the one scavenge on a location per turn. I checked BGG for that. So that's the second action. We get a free red there. Then we can search it again if we need to. So here's the free one. There we go. We are fueled up. So all we got to do now is find the caverns. Why well, go here? So that was uh, one, two. That was the free scavenge. I don't need to scavenge again. So let's go three down to A. Tundra. Stop. Uh, so <laughs> if you move again this turn, draw an exposure card. Basically, this is saying uh, it's a negative effect if you move a second time. But I don't need to because I'm already on A. And A is supposed to be some smoke, so we need to spend an action to investigate it. That's one of the requirements to win. All right, it says, if you don't already have a barn attached to you, oh, I do. Search the monster deck for a barn and attach it. Then remove this token from the game and shuffle the monster deck. Okay, this barn does not activate and does not deal damage, even if their tribe is hostile. When the player with the barn attached to them suffers damage, deal one damage to the barn as well. Ooh. So we want to make sure to keep our uh, thief as healthy as possible. Okay. But okay, um, we're pretty good. We just got to find the cave. We've got the fuel we need. Again, this is an easier kind of starter mission, but <laughs> you can see how things go. And now let's uh, find out what's spawning on the chef's turn. Another seven. Ooh, are we going to be exposed? Uh, let's see. Now, okay. One, two. Which means everybody moves right. Three. Oh, crud. Four. That means the thief is definitely going to get exposed. She's out in the open. That's not my favorite. Uh, what can we do? Ooh, I got throw knife. If you have a knife equipped, discard it to deal six damage to a target. Or if it kills the target, return the knife to your hand. But again, we don't need to do that. Um, I'm going to, for one action, give my frying pan to the girl to make the Norse tribe allied again. And that means, again, uh, when you're resolving your monsters from left to right, if you have allies, they're going to deal as much damage if it's an enemy to their immediate right to them. So if I now do a second action to stab the wolf, 
with my knife. Then they have four life left. That guy will finish him off. So I'm free and clear monster wise. So I've got two actions left. Huh. I'm going to move to the right, and if it's not a shelter, run back to the shelter since we're about to get exposed. Sure. So, oh, nice. It is a shelter, though. It's a gas station with immediately resolving a free uh, scavenge action. I'll do that. Uh, more fuel than we need. Well, whatever. You know what? I'll equip it because that way we have some redundancy, and also the chef's got two uh, carrying spots left, and the thief has none. So she can throw her fuel away or give it. That's right. We can. Oh, no. Can we give? I guess we can still give it to a tribe even if it's equipped. We can give it to them to make them allied again or do the trade action to try to get some food. But OK, uh, I don't want to move away again because then I might get exposed. So for my last action, what the hey? We know we've got a ration to pull food back out. He'll go in and defeat himself by two. The thief can feed herself as well if needed. And then again, he can use his ration and feed both of them with the cook action if we want. So that brings him down to two. And then our friends get to know each other, as in this guy kills a wolf. And then my hunger goes back to three. But we're still looking nice. Well, at least we would be until the <laughs> cold comes. Oop, we finally got some monster tokens. And kind of right where we don't want them, on the eight. Which means uh, the chef's way back home. And I'll, ooh, you know what? I hope I find another vault. And then I can just, like, teleport right back toward the van. But yeah, so uh, if you move into these spaces, you got to roll uh, your stealth or less with minus one for each monster token there. And by the way, you can have as many monster tokens in a spot as you want. But when you're spawning, you can't get more than three. So if there were already three on an eight and we drew an eight, then uh, no more would spawn there. But we could like use an action that moves monster tokens or like the movement uh, thing from the day night cards to have like four or five or six on the same spot. All right, now here's the sad part. Wah, wah. Uh, my thief is frost nipped. Which is extra bad because every time she takes any amount of damage, the barn will take one. I mean, she's got eight. But it does give us a little bit of a timer. We either need to heal the frost nip or find the dang cave. All right. Um, oh, she's drawn another card. Got another stub nose. She's got food. She doesn't need to eat it quite yet. She's got a ton of backstabs, a redundant grappling hook, bait him to deal with those monster tokens. That thing I need would have been great for scavenging fuel, but we already got it. So yeah, she's really just on a cavern quest. So, so, um... I don't know. She's going so far away, but let's go ahead and check what's right next to her. Uh, so first action, back roads. Ooh, when you reveal, you lose an action. So she's got two actions left. Um, so I guess check the corner. Bandit camp. That doesn't sound good. Uh, when you enter, you discard an equipped gear or suffer five damage. Well, she'll discard her extra grappling hook. Or does the fuel count as gear? I think it, well, I don't know. I'll discard the grappling hook just to be sure I'm not cheating. Okay, so that was uh, three actions. At least the bandit camp is very safe. <laughs> you just have to pay them. Um, but we already reach exposure, so there's no point in me like being scared. I guess I'll just go ahead and do four. Come over here. A farm. Ooh, you immediately do a free scavenge action for green. No! Draw a card from the monster deck, then discard this card. That's not good. Please be a Norse card. Please be a Norse. No, it's a friggin' bit. Oh my god, we're gonna die. Oh, the barn. The barn. We gotta save her. <laughs> you know, that's the bad thing about doing your final action with something you're not sure what's gonna happen. Okay, so first it said that this special barn does not activate, so she, uh, like, won't even attack the bear for me. But the bear's gonna attack her. This is terrible, y'all. So look at this. She takes five from the bear. I take five from the bear, which does an automatic damage to her. Then I take two more from the frost, frost nip, which does another automatic damage to her. So she is one from death all of a sudden. And I'm down to 12. That's not great either. If the barn dies, I have to murder five Norse people to complete the mission. So I, I don't want that to happen. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm about to starve, which would also kill us. Although the frost nip will do it anyway. Ah. But my hero, Chefadamia, is over here. Maybe he can reach. Uh, but first we're spawning. Give me a... Oh, God, on the farm, they heard the bear attack. They heard the bear attack. And where are the other Norse people that we're friends with? It's a friggin' wolf. Ah! Okay, okay, we, we need to save her. Um, that's, okay, we're getting closer to a day-night card, whatever. All right, so he gets a card. Painkillers. Deal a player three damage. Every time that player would take damage, reduce it by three until the start of your next turn. Well, yeah, that's not what we need. Um, <laughs> so one running it's the rail yard you get to resolve a free scaven sure he'll try to get some more food from green at least we know the ambush card is i don't need more fuel y'all whatever uh so that was one two we're coming tundra oh if you move again you take an exposure card automatically it was really crushing me here though i still don't have the cavern uh, i think there are two of them but there's still a lot of not cavern <laughs> to, to dig through uh so you know 
think I think maybe the most important thing is to explore more, not actually reach her. So he's going to move up, get exposed, and ah, it's a back road. Then he's going to draw a monster. Great. Well, but we know that's not the way to go. Uh, where is the way to go? Uh, who's he got? Okay, there we go. See? That's what I wanted the thief to get. <laughs> he's just got... He's got, like, this freaking death squad of defenders here, and she's got nobody. All right, and his uh, hunger's up to four. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's right, and he takes two damage. He's down to 16. Still better than the thief. All right. We're doing a spawn for the thief. Let's just draw a 10 again. Oh, my gosh. What's that going to do? Okay, it's a uh, day night. One, two, three, four. Oh, my friends are not. Sudden storm. Each player on an outdoor tile must discard an equipped gear or draw an exposure card. Oh my gosh, they're both on an outdoor tile. Right here, I don't know. It says gear cards have a storage cost. So I'm going to say that fuel is gear and that they'll both discard these fuels they don't really need and we'll be happy. Whatever. All right, okay. Uh, let's draw a card for the thief. Parkour skills. Discard all non-boss monsters attached to you. <gasps> and replace it with monster tokens. Move to three times, ignoring all tile effects, and draw a monster. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, this is like salvation from God. <laughs> um... I still don't know where to go, though. Okay, so I just looked. If we find the cavern and move into it. We don't need an actual, like, action once we get there. Which means I think her best chance is to parkour up, like, back to the gas station. And then she can go 2, 3, 4. Or 2, 3, 4. Or 2, 3, 4. And have, like, the maximum chance to reach a cavern. Assuming something terrible doesn't happen. Okay, so we're going to do that. So we're going to parkour skill. Now, I'm assuming that I don't discard the Baron. Oh, I don't know, actually. Crud. No, you know what? I don't... <sighs> I'm not sure. I guess, like, thematically, if we did parkour skills and ran away, the Baron could not follow us. All right, it's a new plan. It's not nearly as good, but I can use the grappling hook, equip that, then for the second action, like, move up to the gas station or the back roads. So I don't want to go there. Uh, okay, so first action, grappling hook. Second action, up to the gas station. And then, pff, three, four, three, four. I mean... It'll be too late, but yeah, I'll go up here and give me those to look at. So three, yeah, freaking cavern, please. Just, just, god dang, ah. <laughs> Okay. Oh god, reveal, draw a monster. Come on, give me a break here. Can at least be our friends. No, it's a god darn bear. <laughs> okay, so I have one action left. Uh, but l what does the Baron say? Okay, uh, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, the people residing in the cavern rush out when you arrive. They brandish spears, guns, and arrows at you. You pull the young child from out behind your legs and hold your hands up to show them that you mean no harm. The tribe visibly relaxes, and a woman rushes out and grabs the child and takes him back into the cavern. Reduce the Norse tribe's hostility by three. Yay! Okay, so the barn goes away. She's not going to die. We're still exposed. We still have two bears and a wolf on us with one action left. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Uh... Oh, that's right. Well, we have the last fuel we need, so we just need to get back to the van. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, where is it? Is this right? Is this right? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Yeah, discard all bosses attached to you. Replace them with monster tokens. Move up to three times, ignoring all effects. Yeah, <laughs> last card. So parkour was the same salvation. Um, so we move up to three times, ignoring all effects. We'll go one, two, three. Which means you don't have to roll for the ice cliffs or anything. Our bear and two wolves get to hang out. Uh, sorry, Norse. <laughs> We're like, here's your child and uh, a stampede of wild beasts. Enjoy them. But, that's a Drew, but then I do have to draw a new monster. Come on, be a Norse. Gosh darn God. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so as lucky as that turn was, it's not all good because uh, what happens now? Uh, bear attacks me for five damage. I'm down to seven. Then uh, frost nip. I'm down to five. Then whoops, starvation. <laughs> I'm down to uh, three life, but we're almost we're all, we've almost won. We've almost won. Oh man! Thank God the chef is near us. Uh, <laughs> so let's uh, go ahead and do his draw to Bannock Camp. Okay, that's what you get for stealing my whatever I gave you. Oh, my first grappling hook. That's right. All right, and oh, my people aren't going to help me fight anymore. Hmm. All right, let's see what I get. Butcher. If you have a knife equipped, discard it to destroy a non-boss monster in range. There we go. Well, that's really probably not necessary. Um, so let's see. One, two. He's got to test his stealth. So a seven or less. Oh, he got it. He decreased his health, uh, hunger by one. So that was two. She can actually just throw the bear over to him with her push action once she's fed. See, so yeah, that's kind of the key thing here. So let's go ahead and use ration to pull a food card from the discard. 
Uh, the only one in there is the two we used before. And then for his fourth action, he'll use his cook ability, which lowers his hunger by two and hers by two. And it's like Snickers, the second your hunger drops below six, you feel like a human again. So he didn't help her fight at all, but again, she can just push the bear onto him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, his Norse friends can deal with that. Oh, that's right. He is still frost nipped, so he's down to 14. Okay, so close. So close. What are we spawning? 10. That's fine. That's the rail yard and the farm. Okay. And the only thing we're close to happening is monster's not moving at all, so no worries there. Okay, so what are we going to do? First, bear, bye. Because, yeah, he can just have fun with all these people. So it was one. Um, ooh, I got a good idea. Uh, two, go to the vault. Three, I'm going to play beta. Move all monster tokens in range to your tile. Remove two. Oh, and then draw a monster card. I don't know if I want that part. Well, instead, she'll try to stealth in here for her third action. So it's one monster token. She uh, needs to roll a nine or less. And she does. So nobody even attacks her. She's just chilling there. And then, I don't know, man. I guess she'll... Uh... <laughs> Oh, yeah, if I'd done that, I should have just uh, grappling hooked over. Oh, well, I'll use her food to heal her hunger by three. So she's down to uh, one hunger. And it takes up to two, though, but she's down to a single life. So we, we got to win. Ooh, we got to win on the chef's turn because she can't survive another frost nip. Uh, that should be fine. That should be fine, right? We just got to uh, spawn eight. Great, that's on the van. So she gets a monster, but that's not going to stop us from winning. Um, oh, and it's it's a friend anyway. Motier. Uh, immune to damage till the start of your turn when you draw her. Cool. And then we get somebody on the mountain. I think that's it. And yeah, nothing new. Okay, this should be the end of the turn. Although, wait, we got to deal with the bear or he'll kill her if he's on the same spot as her. Let's see. He's got the butcher if he needs it. Oh, and he's got the rancid onion to stun. Perfect. We should be fine then. Let's do one, two. He needs to roll hit. Oh, no, that's right. There is no rolling for stealth when you have any monster cards, including allies. Uh, so we automatically get somebody. Oh, Crud! That's not what I expected. So it's a it's another Norse, but look, when you draw them, you increase the tribe's hostility by one. So suddenly, all those dudes would attack us. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We we we've got this. Um, we're going to uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna feed the bear a rancid onion to stun and poison him, which means he won't attack us, which means he won't kill the thief in our space for free. And then for our very last action, good old knife. Somebody this is not just for stabbing. We're gonna discard our equipped gear, the knife. To be like, hey, we're still your friend. Please don't murder us. I know, I guess I should probably put the second fuel on the car, shouldn't I? And there we go. We're on the van. Uh, we have rescued the child. Uh, we've found the cavern. We're covered in beasts and we're both frostbitten. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess uh, technically he still has to resolve the going down to two and going up to, uh, to hunger. But yeah, we go and we just leave our, I mean, I think these guys can all take care of the stunned bear, right? Brr, brr, brr. <laughs> so there you go. That was the second mission in Wasted Wilds, the newest Maximum Apocalypse set. And yeah, let's do a little uh, updated review because again, I covered this one only with the uh, like original core game back when and a lot has changed. I don't necessarily remember every single difference, but let me go through the things I think I remember. First of all, I think when I originally played, they didn't have the role we can only scavenge one place once per turn. Maybe they did, but either way, that uh, certainly helps out. I think at some point they had had a variant where like you would exhaust locations. So, like if you kept on searching the gas station, you eventually couldn't search it anymore. But honestly, I think that's a little bit extra fiddliness. I think this works fine. Just forcing you to kind of like, I guess, technically you could move back and forth between the ski, the ski resort and the gas station to keep on like milling red if you needed a lot of fuel. But so what? Monsters will be spawning and you probably have other things to do for the mission. So I don't see that as a big uh, drawback. Second, they definitely did not have this uh, spawn deck when I played. And I love this just kind of uh, balancing out the, the luck. Of course, you could still have some swingy things happen, but uh, you're not going to roll like a six 50 times in a row or a seven 20 times in a row. So I think uh, this works well. I like this as an inclusion to the system. I really like these new stars that you like place on unexplored tiles for missions. Before, pretty much all the missions, from what I remember, were like trying to find tiles in the mix, kind of like I had to do with the cavern. But now it tends to be a mix, like either all of them will be star based and you know exactly where you need to go or like one will be star based and one will be a, you know, find the hidden tile kind of thing. 
Because I think it's still exciting to like desperately search for somewhere, but this way it's not as much like the, whoops, both the things we needed were right next to the base, so we immediately win. Yay! You know, like this way. What? There was the other cavern? Give me a break. Um, <laughs> so, like, this kind of uh, splits the difference um, without having the game end too quickly because the tiles just happen to, by randomness, be right next to you, but uh, still having kind of the excitement of searching for a specific location. So I think these stars work really well. I did see some missions where still every single thing is a hidden location. They don't use the stars as much. I don't love that, but the majority in the new campaigns and in like kind of the the back mapping they've done for the new rules to the old campaigns use at least some of these uh, stars on set locations to kind of control the variance in the map more like that. Also, I seem to remember, again, correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't played the original Mac of Apocalypse in so long, but I seem to remember like the scavenge decks. You would build them with specific things, like it would take a while to actually put the specific cards in the scavenge deck, because already the game has you know some setup stuff with having to find the correct tiles and use them. But in the new campaign, you use the same tiles for each mission, so that's not too bad. And now, like the scavenge decks are always the exact same. You don't have to build them with specific uh, proportions of cards and like put like campaign-based cards in there. So I think that's how it used to work. And this is a billion times better. It makes uh, setup much faster. It makes the whole scavenging mechanic much cleaner. But yeah, I also really like this thing. Again, I'm not sure if this was in a previous expansion or not because I only played the original game. The exposure is really fun. Kind of the the question of like, when will a seven come out? How much time do we have until exposure happens? You know, where do you want to be? Do you want to be on the shelter or not? I can picture it being a little bit more frustrating with like three or four players, like at higher player count games, because there's just way more chance that terrible stuff will happen before your turn comes back around. But with how I've been playing it primarily two handed, it's really cool. Uh, the day night effects, I think those might have been in the like gothic horrors maybe introduced that, but that's fun. Like the fact that monster tokens might move around is fun. The tribes are cool, like great for theme. I like that you can make friends in the later missions, as you can imagine. Uh, there are ones that don't really want to be friends with you, and sometimes you have multiple tribes at a time, so it becomes more complicated, but I think uh, that's pretty neat too. So I like all of these additions. I think it all, without making the game too complicated, I think I could still play with my like kids probably with me kind of running this stuff. But it, it kind of uh, deepens the like tactical puzzle a bit and deepens the, the picture of what you're doing. And the best part of the game is always the unique characters and their unique decks. And that remains very cool. Like the new characters in this one, the, the race car driver, the chef, the thief, all of them are, are really neat and have fun abilities. Now, j just uh, I don't know what I said in my original review, but, you know, coming with your eyes open, these are not hugely crazy like decks with like lots of keywords like if i was comparing it to sentinels of the multiverse as an example there's less going on with each of these characters but they do their own thing like the thief is one of the most complicated ones and still pretty straightforward they feel unique it feels different when you play with one versus another they can do tricks that other people can't do so this remains one of the high points of the game and i really enjoy it so yeah uh, i was a little mixed on the original maximum apocalypse like the base game but wasted wilds if this is the way you're jumping in this is the way to play it it is great. And even a basic mission like this one, which I destroyed the map here. God, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> even like a really sim. There's the other vault. Is that it? That was the only other vault? Yeah. Um, <laughs> even a basic mission like this one was still exciting, was still fun. You get like cinematic moments in this game, but with the new mechanics, it feels less random than it was. So it's like kind of a more controlled and tactical, but still cinematic and exciting experience. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm all in for this one now. I think this is great. And I love that they have this book going back to the previously released campaigns and updating them. And this is just a free inclusion with the, well, I guess <laughs> free is relative. You got to buy Wasted Wilds, but this is awesome. I think uh, this is definitely the best way to jump in with the game. And they've made every other release for the game better by doing it. So well done. Uh, really enjoyed this one. That's Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.